Hello and welcome to Introduction to Computing Topic 3, Conducting an Online Search. So what we're going to take a look at now is essentially online searching inside of our browsers. So I'm going to launch, I've got three browsers here, and I'm going to launch each one and take a look at how, um, how it's set up to, uh, to do all our online searches. We want to search the quickest way possible. So um, in your readings, it mentions most modern browsers are set up as uh, just kind of a single box. So you can use your address bar, which we spoke of in the earlier topic, for not only punching in a web address, so I can come up here in Safari and just type in cnn.com and press return, and I can go directly to that website. But what I can also do is come back into that same box, the same address bar, and I can conduct a search. So the nice thing about the Safari browser and Google Chrome browsers is I can search directly into this box or I can type my address. So I can search Google without having to go to google.com. So I no longer have to do this number and type Google, you know, google.com directly into the search bar and go ahead and type in my search directly into that box. No need to do that. I can go ahead and do how many stripes, let's see, spell it right, um, on a zebra, and I will get a Google search that allows me to do that. I also get how many stripes on zebra crossing and some other options here. And I can go directly to it, press return, and I'm launched inside of my Google, um, Google searches that I have down here, as we've looked at before. Now, that's great because um, Safari is set up to do that, but I'm going to go ahead and also launch Google Chrome, and you can see the exact same thing with Google Chrome, is Google Chrome has what they call an Omnibox, essentially the exact same thing, and you can do your searches in here. But I also want to bring your attention to actually changing some settings, which you can do in all modern browsers as well. If you prefer not to use Google, which I don't suggest you do, but you still have that preference, you can come down into your search preferences, which you can access a variety of different ways. Uh, Google has their settings tucked into an address option here on the right-hand side. You can go directly into settings. Once you make your way into settings, Google can bring about being able to set different ones as the default. So each time that you select your uh, punch in your, your search, you're using Bing or you're using Yahoo or Google. Um, I don't know if anyone uses Yahoo anymore, but uh, Bing and, and Google are certain your, your more popular options. You can also manage search engines, which also gives us an understanding. There's not only your main search engines for Google or Yahoo or Bing, these are more web search engines, but um, you can also go to search engines built inside of a site like CNN.com or eBay, or even they have search engines, say for Indeed.com, functions as a job search engine that allows you to find jobs in particular locations and so on and so forth. Um, as you go through Google and go to these particular addresses, Google picks that up smart enough to find that and allows you to make a default right off the bat. If you, uh, say, spend most of your time on Hulu.com web browsing, then you can make that as a default, which would be much easier for you to uh, surf the web. In another case, if you're doing a variety of different web searches, you know, Google would be a great option for you. It's marked as default. When you install these browsers on your machine, they're automatically going to ask you, what do you want set up as your default search engine? Um, so if you don't have Safari loaded yet and you load it on your machine, install it on your machine, it's going to ask you to do that. It's also going to ask you about bookmarks too. Hey, I see a browser already installed. I see this is your search engine. I see these are your bookmarks. It's going to request that you you make those selections at that time. You can bypass those and quickly change them or alter them in your settings if you want to, but you have that option initially when you install the program. Um, bring your way to uh, uh, Mozilla Firefox, and it functions a little differently. Um, ironically, um, they have still have a separate bar for your web addresses and a separate bar for searching. So it is very easy to modify your searches from inside of here, so you've got eBay and Twitter and Wikipedia set up here automatically, which is a nice function because that way 
You know, those are more common. You might go to Amazon.com a lot. You might go to eBay a lot, Twitter, Wikipedia a lot. So without having to go directly to those sites, it will allow you to search within that site um, automatically, which is just a fantastic way to, uh, to set up your browser. So that's a nice feature in, uh, in Firefox. But we're going to go ahead and close out of Firefox here. And of course, you can add more if you want to um, inside of your preferences of Firefox. And we're going to jump right back into uh, Safari Chrome. I'm going to go ahead and um, switch out of Chrome. We're going to jump in back into Safari. And we're going to see the results of our search engine. So once we've gone and, and made a search here, there's it's essentially split into three different sections. Um, we've got a very quick result here, but we all have on the left-hand side and we have in the middle, and then we also have on the far right-hand side. Um, far right-hand side is really um, representative of ad-sponsored searches. So this is um, a little bit more of a specific search that we're not getting any, uh, we're not necessarily getting any ads necessarily, but if I were to do another one, say searching for computer prices, I would have a plethora of um, ad-sponsored options here on the right-hand side. Um, but also on the left hand side, I have some options here for say searching for images, for maps, for videos, and they're all relevant to what you have here um, typed in the box. So if I clicked on images here, I'm going to get images of zebra because that's going to pick up the most relevant item. I'm also going to get stripes, stripes that are picked up there. So some zebra stripes here, zebra stripes here for your painted fingernails, a variety of different options but it is dependent on what you plug in. So maps, you know, um, we're going to get, you know, depending on what's in here, search results, zebra stripes, build a bear. So really nothing that's very relevant because I didn't type in a location like Huntsville, Alabama. I typed in how many stripes are on a zebra. So that's not going to be really relevant. Um, videos are going to be somewhat relevant for zebra. Um, you know, how to create zebra striped nails. Fantastic. You've got a four minute YouTube video on that. Uh, we're going to jump back to web. And since our web is the most relevant search for us in this respect, we have a variety of different options here. I um, mean, we can scroll down and we see, you know, 10 pages of options. We also see search related to how many stripes on a zebra. So animal facts, how big are zebras, random facts about zebras. We have those options as well. Um, but we want to pay a little bit closer attention to what we actually have as a result in Google. And 97% of people will click on this link, this very first link that pops up. And it's going to bring them to answers.yahoo.com. Um, but I also want you to draw your attention to these options that are in green. That's going to show you the domain, which is something we talked about in an earlier topic. So I'm going to facebook.com, I'm going to umuc.edu, I'm going to uh, wikipedia.org, going to animals.howstuffworks.com, um, I'm going to answers.yahoo.com. So that's going to give you an idea of where you are inside of the site. Some of these are pretty deep into sites, they're longer web addresses, some of them are are pretty um, you know, fairly close within the main site but that tells you where you're going so you're not just clicking on a random link or kind of know where you're going in advance and this is a good way for you to determine which links to click on um, if I were say typing a research paper or wanting to include this in my paper about zebras I would be very careful about clicking on this first link. I'm going to click on it and show you why. The result that we get is just anybody can sign into this forum. This is a Yahoo forum, a Yahoo Answers forum. You don't have any have to have you know 18 credit hours in zoology to get yourself an account here and start answering questions about zebras or or anything else that populates. So there's no validity to this person. Um, and that's one of the things we want to look at in terms of verifying the results. Who is this guy? We have no idea. We know he's been a member since 2005. He gives a lot of good answers that are verified by the community. But we don't know anything about this guy. 
So we can't really verify this guy and say, well, he's, you know, he knows what he's talking about. Um, even though this might be the correct answer, um, we, we don't really have a lot of validity to that answer. Um, but we'll read through and it says depending on the species and it has also a source. So he's, he's good enough at least to give us a source. This answer is seven years old. We think, well, it's about zebras. You know, they're, they're a rather um, old species as well. They've been around for quite some time. So that's not really relevant for us in terms of years. Although in some cases that may be relevant for us. Um, and we're, we're just going to kind of keep this in the back, back of our mind where this is sending us to it. So that's something that we have to be careful of. You know, hey, we, we don't really know this guy here. But let's go back to our main results. And, you know, wiki answers is essentially, okay, you know, pretty much anybody can get on there and, you know, start yourself a wiki and start to answer questions. Obviously, Wikipedia has, has some fact checkers and it has, um, you know, a system in play to where it's a little bit better in terms of the type of material that's on that site. Um, even though you don't want to take everything on there as face value. But Wikipedia actually shows here, down here at the bottom. So let's take a look at this one here and let's, let's focus on, on this .edu. The reason being is we know it's a .edu, so therefore it's probably coming out of a university. Um, so we can click on that. And, you know, the site's not, not the best looking site, but hey, this looks, this looks like some good information here. Um, very, um, uh, very elaborate. And I see there's, there's a lot of references here. There's three references, opposed to just one, that I can go back through and verify. And if I were to read through this, I'd realize it's the same information. It's, it's the same answer. Um, this also sends me back to Zebra homepage. And even a trick here is to really look at your results. Is I'm going to delete what's in here and just go back to the... Um, .edu site, and I discover that where is this information coming from? It's coming from the University of Maryland University College off their, uh, off their service. So I know, you know, I might want to do a little bit more research and investigate, well, what are their um, expertise here? What exactly are they, um, you know, offering in terms of programs? What are the programs that have a little bit more prestige? And if something like um, you know, like this topic would, would fall under their, under their area. But I do feel a little bit more comfortable with that. Um, and then I can also jump into, say, let me go down here to Wikipedia, um, Zebra Wikipedia. And the great thing about Wikipedia is, is, you know, you can scroll down here to the very bottom. And as you read through, you see that there are um, numbers here for uh, footnotes that reference a particular um, citation. So if I come down to the bottom, I'll notice that I've got a handful of references here. And this is where Wikipedia really shines. Is it, it allows you to go in a lot of different directions. And I can see that I already have external links here. I've got PBS Nature, so I'm looking at a great site there. Um, you know, Plain Zebra, and then Out of Africa Info to the Zebra. So I've, I've got some great options here for external links. I also have some links to uh, some text here that I can maybe get to through Google Books. And I also have some references to um, a variety of different, uh, different resources. So I feel comfortable that I can find a, a, a fantastic resource through these here down at the bottom that I could use in my research paper by just, you know, obviously I would want to go through and kind of... Um, you know, kind of click through some of these and, and check them out just the same way. And I've, I've got a journal of experimental biology here. And I've got a, uh, a journal written by, by this person here that I can kind of click on. And I can see some, maybe some results of other items that she's written. So I feel a little bit more comfortable about the author. And I could do, you know, additional searches, say on LinkedIn.com or something like that, or even Google to give me uh, some additional um, additional information about her. So I'm feeling, I'm feeling pretty good right now. Um, I'm feeling that I've got, I could just highlight this here, possibly. But 
in the end, I feel like I've got some pretty good, um, pretty good information here that, that's coming out of my searches. I'm just going to highlight, do a quick search. Go back. And in Safari, and most modern browsers, you can highlight those and look them up directly. So I can search with Google by highlighting it, and I can find out you know, who this person is um, you know, and, and get a little bit more information about that. Something's relevant to that, too. So I can also do more research on the, uh, on the authors as well. So um, you know, kind of check out who that person is. So we go back. And so I know within my search results, um, for the answer to this question, wow, I'm on a great path. And I feel, uh, I feel quite comfortable with that. Um, I also want to move your direction down, move your focus down over here to the right-hand side, to where we have an advanced search option. And something you'll notice if I go through, um, let me just jump to, say, CNN here. And I'll jump over to Google again and how many many stripes are in a... When I want to do an advanced search, that's not an option that comes up here in my address bar. So I have to actually click on the search result and then that's going to send me to the Google page of the search results. And I'm not going to be able to get to it until I get to that page. And here are my advanced search options. I wouldn't know it, just kind of looking at it, like a gear, but it brings you into options, and then you have your advanced search options. So you'd select that, pops up this dialog box, and what's nice about this is we get a variety of different options. I'm gonna go ahead and change this to how to write a cover letter. And we can do Boolean searches here, so I can include exact phrases, um, you know, numbers ranging from a particular period, um, a lot of different types of words, a lot of options here, but I want to bring your attention down here to the next area, and I can actually type in a domain. So I can search within Wikipedia, or I can find sites that are only going to come from a .edu domain. Great. And I can also say, you know what? I want to find information that is within the past month or within the past year. Any language will do. Any region will do as well. Um, any format's nice, too, because if I'm looking for maybe white paper, then I can search for PDFs. Um, and then I can do an advanced search here. And then what it happens is it gives me information within the past year. This one's from Harvard. This one's from Harvard. Um, this is a Dickinson.edu, .edu account, Purdue University. So I'm getting some pretty good results here. The very first one, Harvard results, Harvard Law School. So I'm, I'm, I feel very confident that, hey, that's a, that's a great resource for me to use. And I've got a lot of other links here that I can jump through. And I can come up here to the top and kind of search through my hyperlinks. And I've got, wow, I have sample resumes. I have sample cover letters I can click on, um, PDF documents here. So that's great. Um, that's going to give me some, some really nice references, some really nice resources. And, you know, if I didn't do that advanced search, you know, if I just did how to write a cover letter, I didn't do specific sites, what do I get? I get a blog. Well, blogs, you never know. Anybody can start a blog. Anybody can write a blog. So, you know, are you 100% confident on this Allison Doyle? Maybe. You know, she looks reputable. Hey, but uh, you, you never know with blogs. You know, as I said, anybody can start a blog. So be very, um, very careful about just doing regular searches and not specifying something a little bit more particular. You know, I've got Life Hacker here, so I've, I've got, you know, and the deeper I go into my searches, I'm getting a whole host of, you know, Business Insider, the Job Explorer. I mean, who is that person? I don't know. I've got a number of ads here. So that, that information becomes much less relevant to me. I'm 
I've got tons of ads. It looks like they're just trying to sell me something. Um, so the information I get from that site, you know, I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to bet the farm on that. Um, so that's that's something. Also, videos are nice with this one because wow, I can go into something kind of you know explaining it to me, talking me through it. I've got some good um, videos here that are coming from YouTube or you know a variety of different sources there. So so that's good as well. So um, one last thing I'll bring your attention to if you're looking for photographs, I can type in say Death Valley here. And on the left-hand side, Google already recognizes that this is a location. I've got a map here that I can click on. Um, I can also go directly into uh, images, and I can get different types of images. So I can scroll down and say I only want medium images for my presentation, so the file size isn't that large. And you know what? I've got a little preference for a black and white picture, um, so I'm looking for those as well. And I just kind of search through and say, "Wow, this is a great one. Um, let me, uh, you know, let me let me kind of credit that um, and, and use it in my presentation." So that's another option for you too, for uh, for doing some searches. So you can you can conduct your searches in a uh, in a couple of different types of fashions. You can use a variety of different search engines, eBay or Google or Yahoo or Bing, set those up inside of your browser. Um, my uh, my recommendation is to use Google because Google has Google's the best. It it gives you really it's it's very good at giving you exactly what you want. Um, relevant searches, a variety of different types of searches that you can conduct very easily from uh, from their site. So that is essentially conducting online searches in a nutshell.